Hi, I'm Dawn Parrott, a certified pastry chef and master sugar artist. I teach the Royal Icing Piping, Stenciling, and Filigree course on CakeMade.com. In this course, I teach many of the techniques that I used to earn me a first place at the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show in 2013. Check it out if you want to have an in-depth look on how to make 3D filigree, stenciling a cake, brush embroidery, and much more. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a Royal Icing monogram. If you'd like to take this a step further, come join me at CakeMade.com and I'm gonna teach you how to take that monogram, make a topper, and place it on a beautiful royal icing paneled cake. We're gonna go ahead and start the actual letter. I like the script or italic letters. If you're not comfortable hand drawing them, you can find stencils like these at your local craft store. I've done an L, and the reason I've just done the L is I love the shape of the L. We're doing all our outlines first, and then we're gonna fill it in with just a little bit of filigree in the center to give it a bit of strength. I'm gonna use a tip too because this is going to be something that, again, you're going to handle. It's going to be fairly tall and delicate. So use a slightly heavier tip so that you're not panicked when you pick it up. So I'm going to start on the corner, and I'm just going to follow the one line. Again, if you don't hit exactly the pencil mark, don't worry. You're the only person who knows it, unless it's really off and it doesn't look like your letter anymore. If it's a little bigger, that's fine. It'll just show bigger on top. I find when I put my arms on the table, I have to pull them off sometimes. It's actually smoother if you don't rest your arms anywhere. Okay. So there's the basic form of the L, and we're going to add on those little parts now that are going to give us room to put some filigree work. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to join up here on the inside, and pipe and let it fall a little wider around the center, and getting narrower down by the tip. Again, lowering my pressure so it's nice and neat. Always think about that neatness. And the part where I started, go with your damp brush, fix it so it looks like it's one piece that we don't have an extra line. Okay, I'm gonna start on the center here again. Add some icing, let it rest. And stop your pressure just as you're getting up to the first layer of icing. Always make sure those start and stop points are nice and clean. We should, they should look like they're almost one seamless piece. So we've got two little sections I want to add in last. Over here on the turn. Kind of ending off almost where that last one met up with the original outline. And one on the bottom. Just want to make this bottom part just a little bit wider. Not quite as big as some of the areas, but just a little piece. It'll give us some added strength when we go to put it on our actual build-up piece. Okay, so I can take this out of your way. And you can see we've got a basic L. So what I want to do now is fill the inside of the L. It's just a little bit of S's and C's, let the whole piece comes together. So again, just some random. I'm going to do an S and C. And like I said, there's no right or wrong here. You're just trying to fill it in. This is going to give you some of that added strength when you go to pick it up. So the more you can fit in there, the stronger that panel is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and put some of these in the oven just to get them to dry a little bit faster with the light bulb. Don't turn your temperatures on, just your light bulb. That's enough heat to help this move along. Okay, so I've pretty much filled in all the open areas. So now I'm going to start, you can pick anywhere. I'm going to start up on this edge and I'm gonna pipe those little bead borders and do just little bead borders all around. So essentially, we're doing it for two reasons. We're gonna make it stronger again, but we're gonna create a little bit of texture on top. These bead borders, we're gonna put gold, so they're gonna have that extra little touch on the top. I'm gonna to quickly move the stencils out of the way so that I have more access to my pattern. If you don't wanna put them in the oven, you can go ahead and let them sit and dry And you can start, if you want to start on the bottom and come to the top, it, or start in the middle. I generally kind of do almost the whole outside line and fill it in, kind of like I did when I piped the actual outside. And just follow the shape of the L. So we're gonna have that last little section of the L now. Turn around, and we just got maybe three more shells. There we go. 
So this is your piped filigree owl. We're gonna let it sit and dry for a little. Now that our owl has had time to dry, we're gonna very carefully pull the plastic back, pick up the owl, but this time we need to put our letter back over on its other side and pipe the border on the opposite side. We're doing it for two reasons. We want to have the front and the back the same, but I also want to make it a little bit stronger because this is going to be a difficult item to pick up, especially first time around. Straight down, hand underneath nice and flat so you can catch that release piece. Okay, so real gently, you're going to take it. The easiest way is to hold it in your two hands and flip it over. I'm going to place it down. This little piece came off. We're going to attach that back on. The thin pieces sometimes will move, but when we border it, that's going to pick it right back up. So just place your little curl where it belongs, and we're going to border that across. Don't panic it. It's just sugar. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of icing where that came separate and touch it up. Now that border is going to make it so much stronger again, so don't worry. Okay. Let that sit. We're going to do that same bead border following all around, all the way around the L. So you'll see this makes it quite a bit thicker. A lot easier for you to handle and pick it up. And I'm going to put some in the middle. I missed my center point right there. Okay. So now we've piped all around that. I'm going to let that set and rest for a little bit. Again, we want it to set so that we can paint the gold on there and put that accent so the L's gonna pop off the topper. So that's how you make a royal icing filigree monogram. For an in-depth instruction on how to take this into a three-dimensional monogram topper and many other royal icing elements, check out my course on piping, stenciling, and filigree at cakemade.com.